don't inherit the earth. In the devotionals, I always mention that if we have a oops or a <laughs> or a time where I'm relating and sharing what what God has shared with me and what coming out of my mouth and I feel like I've gone off track or something and God speaks to me and says, uh-uh, then I flat out come back and tell you we're doing a do-over. <laughs> and so guess what? This is the second <laughs> version of this beginning of a two-part on blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. And the reason is because this portion that we're looking at right now on the Sermon on the Mount or on the, the meaning of meek is we need to define what meek is so that you understand it in a way that relates to you so you don't try to become meek you don't try to force meekness upon yourself or you don't try to invent some new idea about what being meek is or what the meek are or who they are because God knows and humility and meekness often gets confused because we have when you do a Bible study on meekness you can see that Moses was called the meekest man in all the earth, but we have movies and we have in Western culture this idea that Moses was some big, strong, tough guy, you know, like a Charlton Heston, and that he was like, you know, stomping and romping and chomping, you know, just to be successful. And the reality was that we're often told that he was a stammerer and he stuttered. And if you've ever met some people who stuttered before our modern days of, you know, like, making disability acceptable, which has only happened in the last 40 or 50 years, then in the old days, not so long ago, when I was growing up, if you had a disability, you were meek because you were kind of like, you know, keeping humble and keeping out of the limelight. You weren't exalted for your disability. You were actually treated as a lesser person for it. And so stammerers or stutterers were often treated that way. And a lot of history records that, and you can see that. So Moses, who was considered the meekest man on the earth, was not what we see him as. So it's kind of hard to get a picture of it, you know, especially in Western culture. The same thing is true about Jesus. We're told that Jesus was meek. And, whoa, wait a minute, how could he be meek? Because most people want to make Jesus out to be this rough and tough mason, you know, that he was out there carving stone, you know, rather than a carpenter of wood, you know, he was a carpenter of stone, you know, because after all, stone was in the land there. Well, they forget that there were forests in Israel, too, and that carpentry was a science, and it was a developed craftsmanship. And so, people that play that game about trying to make meek not weak, and trying to make weak not meek, and get all confused, don't really give credit to God for what he is doing and saying. Have you ever pictured a gentle giant? I mean, think about it for a minute. Somewhere, at some point in time, you've heard that expression, a gentle giant. I know that there used to be a TV show on that was, uh, had a guy named, well, he had a, a ex-football player that was a big guy. He was big and tough, you know, and, but he was gentle. He was considered a gentle giant. Now, he had strength. If he wanted to, he could pick you up and he could set you down with one hand. That is the portrayal of what a gentle giant is. Often, people that have a poor self-esteem inside have meekness on the outside because they are really like marshmallows on the inside because they're, they're kind of like timid, but not weak. They're timid for other reasons because they're more emotionally drained than their physical capability, which may be containing something of great ability. For instance, the gentle giant idea is that a lot of big people have that ability to literally stomp on you, but they're meek about it. You know, they're not, they don't have an attitude. And sometimes that's why the Beatitudes get a little confusing, because sometimes people portray it as only a Beatitude, an attitude to be, or something, an uh, attitude inside, where it's actually a personality also and a aspect of the Holy Spirit. So understanding meekness is kind of important, you know, for you to get a handle on who the meek are, because there's more than one definition of meekness. And Jesus was addressing his generation that was downtrodden and had been 
put upon by Roman occupation that was tantamount to slavery. There were people who were so beaten down by religious law that they didn't dare look up to God and think that they would ever have an opportunity to know salvation. There were people that were so humbled and beaten by their own neighborhoods that they were ostracized and put into the Valley of Gehenna, which was literally the hell on earth of where trash was burnt from the city of Jerusalem and there was constantly smoke arising. And those who suffered from leprosy or from any ailment of a boil or anything that could not be cleansed or could not appear before the priest as cleansed, suffered and were set aside. There was much bias and prejudices. There was a lot of hypocrisy, a lot of putting upon people and keeping them in a caste system where they were lower than others. The Samaritans were treated as less than human. The tax collectors were treated as ostracized by the Jews. There were a lot of people who, because of this hostility, were put in a place of humility and eventually became meek because they could not even consider themselves worthy of Jesus, much less of his salvation coming. And so, in that way, if you recognize two parts of it, one is a virtue of the Holy Spirit coming upon a person and causing them to not exercise their rights, to not exercise their abilities, to not seek to pontificate, meaning build themselves up and promote themselves in such a way that you look at them, but rather they step back and they would rather lift you up and have you take the credit and have you take the glory and even when it comes to in some ways like Jesus says later in the Sermon on the Mount when it comes to being righteous they say oh no it's okay blame me blame me and say I did it and they take the blame rather than let the other person suffer they are willing to suffer for and give up their own rights in order that someone else might be exalted Humility is not that way. Meekness offers it, the sacrifice of itself for the benefit of another. That's meekness as we see it in Jewish culture. That's as we see it in the Middle East. It treats the other as better than themselves and means it. And so, rather than a humble person who simply says it, a meek person actually is experiencing it because of what they've been through and what they know to be true. And so it's important to get that down because what Jesus is trying to identify with is those who are downtrodden and beat up, those who don't think of themselves as being worthy, those of themselves who are hurting, who are broken, who are contrite, who literally are even sometimes the emotional gentle giants. You might see a man who may be raised among women has more of an emotional base and he's considered effeminate and I don't mean homosexual but I mean he's sensitive and he's got tender feelings that are easily provoked and he doesn't exercise them but he holds them back and so he doesn't jump up and volunteer to be the leader he doesn't step forward to say I am or I can do it the meek are that way and blessed they are for they inherit the earth but God wants us to know what meekness is in that way because God commended Moses and brought him closer to himself because of his meekness. And likewise, Jesus was considered meek. For I am meek and lowly. Consider that well when we look at ourselves because I am not meek. I say that and then the Lord says, slap me. Um, I have been meek in other times and places and should it be that the exercise of that that fruit of the spirit in my life were needed then yes <laughs> although it's a shock to some people when they see it I can be meek <laughs> because I was a wallflower so I prior to salvation knew what the ugly felt like you know because I was ugly I had a big nose I had a big mouth I was ugly you know I was a ugly duckling but when the Holy Spirit came upon me I felt so washed of new in love that I just wanted nothing more than for everyone else to enjoy what it is they had 
and I considered them greater than I ever was or ever would be. And to this day, in many ways, I still do, and in some ways, some people say, there's no way. <laughs> so I say, I am not meek, though the Lord says, you have been. So understand that meekness isn't weakness. Remember that. Two, meekness is like a gentle giant who has the strength and the ability he could stomp on you if he wanted to, but he cares. He's got feelings. That's what meekness is. You have tenderness. Meekness involves tenderness, compassion, humility, gentleness, a self-deprecation, but not of a humiliating way, but one of recognizing that it's okay to be lesser that God may be greater. So there's more to meekness than meets the eye. And today, as we examine the meaning of it, it's hard for men to become humble because they learn to humble themselves, but they don't do it in such a way that they recognize what the benefit is. But if you have a man who has emotions, then he begins to incorporate the humility into becoming meek that God may produce in him something contrary to what the Western civilization is all about, which is the violent. You know, we have this whole idea that, you know, if it's out there, I got to get it. We get the brass ring. We have to compete. We have to win. We have to succeed. Where meekness is the opposite. It doesn't ask to succeed. It doesn't need to. It's meek. It will inherit the earth. And that means everything in it. So the contrary to what the Western idealism is of getting the American dream is wrong when it comes to the kingdom of God because meekness is the opposite of assertion, but it's the subsertion of us into the will of God and allowing him to give us what he would have for us to be, which is meek then we are easily malleable, we're easily entreated, we could easily be touched, and we could easily feel the other emotions of other people, and then we would care if we are meek. So, in this definition, I pray that you would take the time to walk away with Jesus for a few moments, to get some understanding of meekness that maybe you didn't grasp just now, and you couldn't understand what was being said. Because tomorrow we'll talk about, or we'll share the evotional of blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. But understand what meekness really is. Then it begins to make more sense of who he's talking to, what he's talking about, and how it applies to us today. Because meekness is exactly opposite of everything we're taught in Western culture. The only thing I could tell you about meekness is if you want to picture a Catholic monk in some ways, then that is a, an example. Same thing with being a idea of a gentle giant, that too. Or a person with a handicap that stammers or is humbled. Or the girl who is too shy, because meekness doesn't invi involve shyness, but it involves the same aspect of the quality that shyness causes which is sometimes a poor self-esteem. But meekness has an esteem, but it esteems itself lesser so that others may be greater. Consider meekness today as you talk to Jesus. He can show you the way and what meekness truly is because he wants you to be meek. And you may never get there in this life, but trust me, when it happens, it's all because of his doing and not your ability to do.